Hey folks, welcome back to 80 Days. Last time, well, we planned to make it to Vladivostok without problems, and let's hope that this this does indeed occur. I sincerely hope so. So we know that this departs tomorrow before one. And now they do have three suitcases. How many suitcases do we have? We have four. I'm sure we'll be able to buy more storage space. Sometimes you can't. There's some situations where you can't buy storage space. But we should be able to, like, on pretty much pretty much all occasions you can. There's just a few rare exceptions where you can't. Anyway, we will hotel, because that's what you do a lot in this game. You hotel. Let's see. Uh, now, here's the, the generic options. Um, What do we need? Uh, let's do the errands. That's usually a good choice if you're not sure. Earning 53 pounds, yay. And now we can depart. So that's that. Before one. In that case, we should just go, I think, yeah. Ah, I knew this was going to be a problem. Okay. So we're going to have to sell some things at the market, which is open now. Let's see what we can do here. What don't we need? You know, we probably don't need the cold climate stuff anymore. Get rid of that. Oh, that's expensive. We'll hang on to that for sure, and I guess we'll hang on to that as well. Um, flying, maybe. European airships. Well, we're not going to be in Europe much longer. Let's get rid of that. Uh, yep. Hang on to that as well. No, you know, we probably don't need to. Let's get rid of that, actually. Oh, we bought it here. <laughs> now we should be able to move all this stuff over. And there we go. Now we should be right to go. Yes. Galoshes will help. Good. Let's go. Now, the game mentioned last time that these fishermen would be able to help us. And I hope that is the case. We made our way to Vladivostok on a small and rather battered fishing trawler. It was... oh, let's be nice. It was a quaint little craft that usually did not venture farther than a few miles down the Razdolnaya River. The fishermen were friendly enough, and tried to engage Monsieur Fogg in conversation. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, he can speak for himself, right? <laughs> I stayed silent, and my master struggled to maintain his vaunted sang Freud when confronted so directly with, as he would put it, local colour. Well, I guess that was a bad choice. Oh, no. Anyway. And we have someone here. We know we want to go to Yokohama from here. And then San Francisco. So we've still got this same route planned, pretty much. Uh, and then after that, it's a it's a darn question, isn't it? <laughs> after that, we'll just start picking random crap, because I don't really know. Look at this! <laughs> All the white options. Just, 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 just say things. Sure, fishing's fine. There you go, I knew that was a good decision. Just, just pick things. Oh god. Okay, great. <laughs> what did we learn? Something we probably don't care about. Alright. Ugh, oh, I'm getting worried that we're not gonna do this. Uh, ooh. I think we want to pick the second one, considering. The fishermen seemed nervous about our destination. Unsurprising given our lack of fish official permissions. Our payment was the only reason they chanced the harsh punishment for transporting foreigners to Vladivostok. Ooh. Didn't... I thought they said they were gonna... Oh, no. <laughs> this is bad. Um... I felt a certain guilt for using their desperation to our gain. Monsieur Fogg did not even notice being far too preoccupied with his wager. As it was, when we hoped to be sailing into Golden Horn Bay by cover of dusk, things did not go to plan. Rounding that final curve, it seems the crew came across a rich shoal of fish, and unconvinced of our goodwill, they stopped to do their work. Ooh. Maybe we should let them do it. I don't know. Hmm. Because that's going to take up even more time. But I'm thinking maybe if we let them do it, they might... They might help us get into the country? I don't know. Oh, let's take a gamble. 
I shook my head but left them to it. There is no use arguing with locals or with Monsieur Fogg. No, most certainly not. And you know what? I'm just going to wait. We kind of know where we're going for now. Oh, that's nice, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, lose a bit of health. Oh man, this really does take a while, huh? Oh boy. Didn't you just say? <laughs> Whatever. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Relations on our little prison ship have been frosty today, to say the least. Monsieur Fogg is furious. He does nothing but consult his ledger. I have tried to make peace on our little vessel. Enough that this evening we finally arrived in the military port of Vladivostok, where things will go very, very south, because... Poor planning. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Oh, there's nothing we can do. So we know our plan is to go to Yokohama, and that's gonna... Oh, that's gonna take five days. Oh no, and from there... To San Francisco, and I guess from there, like we could start heading this way, but again, I have I'm pretty sure that's like the train ride across America, and I've done that like two times in two different playthroughs. So I'd like to do something different if the option comes up. Anyway, I am very worried. I am very, very worried <laughs> because I think a bad thing is about to happen. The military port of Vladivostok looked out over the calm black water of the Sea of Japan and was populated largely by soldiers of the Far East Fleet and a mix of Chinese, Korean, and Russian residents. Um, This might be of use to us, and a certain thing has not come up yet. Let's see. I was curious about the foreign residents that managed to chance upon Du Feng, a talkative Chinese merchant who spoke a remarkable area of languages, including French. We are not foreigners, he exclaimed. Good sir, my family has lived in Hai Shen Wai for many generations. Ha Shen what? I stammered as he snorted with laughter. Um. <laughs> I kept trying till I managed a semblance of the correct sounds. Feng looked impressed, by my effort at least. Most foreigners have this trouble, he said neutrally, and I was rather abashed. Hai Shen Wai means Sea Cucumber Cliffs. It is the Chinese name for this city of Vladivostok, though once it was called Yongmin Cheng, City of Eternal Light. Hmm. You know, I kind of like the I kind of like the uh, earlier name better. The earlier name is more evocative, I opined, and Feng agreed. Yes, my friend, much is lost with time. The thin evening light had begun to darken by the time I made it back to my hotel, but my adventure here was far from over. Here we go. Oh no. An imposing imperial army officer accosted me in reception and subjected me to a thorough search. Uh, I don't believe it matters if you object, because he'll do it anyway. I gave no objection, and he studiously went through our cases in, and my pockets before pulling out a crumpled paper, the, revolu the revolutionary pamphlet from Moscow. This is a banned material, he declared. You will be held for questioning. This is different? Uh, hmm. Is it because of that thing we picked up? I can't remember where we got that. Was it on the train ride? I think it was. So what do we do? Hmm. I mean, if we're held for questioning, again, that's probably going to take time. I pleaded with him, but I may as well have begged the thunder not to roll. And so it was we came to spend five nights in a Russian military jail. Oh, God, here we go. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. When we were finally released, it was without much discussion. We appointed to the docks and told to leave, and quickly. Yay! I knew this was a great idea. God damn. Well, now we're going to take even more time heading over this way. That departs at 3. Well, we can take the time to explore, I suppose. We might as well. I walked the streets a while, discovering possibilities for how we might progress, and clearly we did not find any. Let's see what's on the market quickly while we're here. We had that before. I don't know what that would accomplish. Don't really need that. Uh, nothing we particularly need, so let's just move on. Ah, uh, I knew it was going to happen. I shouldn't have come this way. Oh, wow. That's good. <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute. When did Fog lose so much health? Was that from the... Must have been from the jail, I guess. That is quite unfortunate, but we should be able to fix him up a bit as we go.
Anyway, we avoided the Russian military ships, and instead took passage on a Korean vessel crewed by a mix of Koreans, Mongolians, and Siberians, who regarded Monsieur Fogg with grave curiosity. Um, <laughs> I don't like the second option. I tried to dismiss their attentions, but it did little good. They continued to goggle at my master in mild disbelief until he retreated below deck with the slightest furrows, and it furrows etching his brow. Fair enough, yeah. Let's tend to fog, because that's a smart thing to do. Because, you know, we don't want him to die or whatever happens when he gets to zero. I don't know what happens, as I've said before. For the first day aboard, we kept ourselves mostly to ourselves. The crew seemed busy with their tasks, and... I was happy to have fewer, th fewer of those myself. Monsieur Fogg was his usual impervious self, however, and made his calculations and read his newspaper. Meanwhile, the boat steamed onwards. So apparently we're going to be here for five days. That seemed to be how long that was going to take, which really sucks. Keep, keep helping Fogg, that's a pretty good idea, I think. One of the cabin girls, Eleanor, spoke good English, and was attached to us as a translator, though she created as much conversation as she explicated. Do you know my parents? Um, well, I doubt it since I've only just met you. Eleanor nodded. My father was a Russian officer, maybe, I think, and Mama comes from a famous Cossack family. They're all soldiers. Um, hmm. A Russian officer, maybe, I raised an eyebrow. Well, Mama met him when he was dressed as a man and joined the Cossack host. He was very surprised, I think, Eleanor shrugged. Mama says he died of shock, leaving me as a present. But I think he probably ran away because Mama is so fierce. She looked proud rather than distressed at this prospect. I blinked down at the little cabin girl, rather at a loss as to how I should respond. Um... That's nice, I hazarded, and she nodded enthusiastically. Mama runs the boil boiler room. All the sailors are frightened of her, she told me rather wistfully. One day I will be like her. Eleanor made a mock fierce face, and I pretended to quake in terror until we both began laughing uproariously. Uh, ooh. Obviously we've got to try to meet her, this sounds hilarious. I would like to meet her, I said, and Eleanor giggled with delight. I will ask, she replied. I'm sure that's going to go spectacularly well. <laughs> Always tend to fog, because it's the smart thing to do in this situation. Eleanor knocked on my door unreasonably early in the morning, eyes bright. Mama says she wants to meet you. She sees my arm. Will you come? Well, of course we will. Lead the way, mademoiselle. We descended into the bowels of the ship. I felt the heat and noise of the engine before I saw it. The rumbling whistle of the boilers, the shouts of men shoveling coal, the thumping of the pistons and the groan of metal. A woman with muscular arms sheened with sweat and hair shorn to her ears presided over the activity with well-worn confidence. She glanced over to us and grunted. <laughs> I bowed deeply, as I would to any lady. Unimpressed, she spat at my feet while Eleanor chatted away in an unintelligible dialect. The formidable woman regarded her daughter with a certain detachment, which... Hmm. You know, hmm. I think the second one, actually. Was most unnatural, especially in a mother. Still, it seemed to do the girl little harm. We took our leave soon after, and Eleanor smiled at me radiantly. Isn't she wonderful, she breathed. I... I kept my thoughts to myself, but Eleanor barely seemed to notice. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Thank goodness we're nearly there. Eleanor laughed as I hung over the ship's rail to get a better view of Yokohama as we neared the port. She gave me a hug goodbye, which surprised me, though her mother watched me with hard eyes throughout our exchange. We weighed anchor as the sun set. It lit the foreign flags in the harbour with a bright fire as it dipped below the horizon. Well, that sure was a thing. <laughs> Wasn't much to that little journey, really. But anyway. Right, we can sell a thing, can't we? This. I don't see why not. It's not going to do much else for us, so there's a bit of money back. Um... Okay. Heavy storm set? Could potentially be useful. We probably don't need a lot of these things anymore, really, do we? Just thinking, we, you know, we should probably sell some of these, like, Greece and Turkey. We're, we're past there, I believe. Caribbean, probably don't need that either. 
So that'll free up some space for us. And Fog is saying something. Honolulu. We don't want to go that way anyway. Is there another option for us? Nope. Uh, we want to go here. Three days? Are you serious? Jeez. And that's going to take 17 days. Good lord. I think I have made bad decisions. Uh, well, you know what? Considering we're going to be here for three days, let's go stop by the bank and withdraw some money. Even though we've got plenty, it never hurts to. Monsieur Fogg snapped shut his ledger. Let's see if the bank can offer us a good return for our time. I regarded the bank as we entered. We were roundly ignored for ten minutes by the lackluster staff. You want to make a withdrawal, the manager asked. You may have to wait a day or two. We can take... Yeah, we can take 1500 in two days, I believe so. Yes. We require 1,500 pounds, I said. The manager nodded. I have to communicate with London first, of course, he apologized. Should have a reply within two working days. It seems, Monsieur Fogg remarked as we left, we have some time to dispose of. So, yep, as the game says, we can come back on Friday. And then I guess we can spend some time exploring, because I don't think there's much else I really want to do. And then comes the old wait. <laughs> We're going to have to wait a while, unless there's a more helpful route here. Is that down to Manila? Looks like it. That's not going to be helpful to us. It was hard to believe that Yokohama had only relatively recently opened to foreigners. There was an entire foreigners district not far from the waterfront, where it was as common to hear Chinese or Russian as Japanese. Uh, there are several varieties, varieties of English to choose from as well, though Monsieur Fogg would have barely, barely deigned to include the nasal tongue for, of the American merchants. I noticed a Japanese man watching the scene with a look of intense concentration and scribbling in a handbook. A sketchbook, rather. Uh, what are you doing? He jumped and left a smear of ink on the paper. He looked up, clearly irritated. Do you mind, he said, his accent an unholy mix of Dutch, French, and English. I'm making a drawing for a woodcut. Uh, he was clearly a temperamental sort, so I left him to his work with a polite smile. I do not think he liked for foreigners from his drawing of them. <laughs> hmm. Fair enough. Just double double check the market once more. Yeah, there's not much I really need. You know what? Might as well grab this safety harness. We've got room for it. Could come in handy. So unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a while for the next departure, which sucks. But, you know, what can you do? Uh, we don't even have the option to, to get money here, so we will attend to Fog. And there we go. He got 10 health out of that, which is definitely good. And again, we have the option to depart. So we could take the trip to Honolulu at any time, but... But as I said, I've done that before. And then we know we can go from there to... There. That's going to take four weeks anyways. Yeah, I think we'll stick around for a change. At least for a change for me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we just have to hotel again. And then we'll probably just have the option to look after Fog again, which we will do. Yes. Ah, this is different. Then as I prepared for my toilet, I felt a hand grab mine and pull me around. I found myself staring into the face of a young lady. Um. <laughs> well, this is interesting. Um. Unhand me, mademoiselle. You are Mr. Phileas Fogg, correct? The lady demanded. <laughs> of course we're going to say the first one. Ooh, actually, maybe we should ask why. Hmm. Why do you ask? So you are, then, she nodded. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am merely his valet. She shrugged. Good enough. She set herself down on the corner of my bed with no small familiarity. I have been following your adventures with some interest, she continued. Then, smiling, she reached into her jacket for something. A flower with petals as black as jet. The press call me the Black Rose. But what are you doing here? Well, she sighed, you're hardly, you're hardly making me feel welcome. She twirled the flower stem between her fingers and giggled. I could only stare in amazement. You're a thief, I declared. Not just a thief, she replied. I am THE thief, the most celebrated thief in Europe, perhaps the whole world. 
Certainly, I intend to expand my field a little. So what do you want with me, I demanded. Now that's the question. I've been following your journey quite closely. Doggedly, you might say. And I think we can help each other. Uh, I am no criminal, I protested. That's an indelicate way to put it. But even so, I think this particular escapade might be something you consider to be more acceptable rather than less. If you'll hear me out. Um, hmm. If my master were to hear this, I began helplessly, then he would be as outraged as you will be, she assured me. A great game is being played, and all of our futures are at stake. She paused for emphasis before continuing. You know of the Artificers Guild, of course. Why is the second one? Let's pick it, because it's great. We are traveling around the world, I replied. We are most reliant on artificers and their creations. She nodded. And you know the Guild is a peaceful organization with no political aspirations. But I've been following their actions for some time, and I can tell you that this is not only is this not the case, but also they are amassing considerable power and wealth. Um. Hmm. And I suppose it is the wealth you're interested in, I replied bitterly. The wealth is interesting, she agreed, but money is the venom of the viper. If you draw it away, the creature is quite powerless, she nodded. And I, for one, do not wish to live in a world dictated by artificers and their automata, which is why I have uncovered their weakness, and I intend to inflict an injury upon it. But what does this have to do with me? You are, I think, uniquely placed to assist me. Let me explain. She perched herself by my side. I have learned that the wealth of the artificers has grown beyond what they might keep in the banks of any one nation without raising suspicion and paying large sums of taxes. So they have begun, in secret, to store it away in a vault of their own devising. That seems most wise of them. Their wealth is stored inside a floating fortress, kept in constant movement on the Atlantic so as to avoid detection of all the attentions of pirates. It never comes ashore, but is refueled by gy gyrocopter. Her eyes twinkled with excitement. Passport 2. It is entirely unmanned. We can get aboard. There will be nothing to stop, stop us from taking the gold for ourselves. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, really. And you require the assistance of a valet, I finished with some sarcasm. Forgive me if I am suspicious, mademoiselle. I need you, she said, because I believe you'll be able to convince the artificers to allow you aboard. And why on earth would they allow that? Because you are going around the world in 80 days. You are valet to Phileas Fogg, and your wager is the proof of the progress that the artificers worship. In short, they will allow you aboard their boat because they like you. Hmm... This is interesting. This is very interesting. I don't know what to do here. Um, I mean, artificers have been helpful to us. They've gotten us all sorts of places. Certainly in multiple playthroughs, they come up all the damn time. And this is no exception here. But at the same time, I'm curious about this. But surely they would not risk their secret getting out. Trust me, she replied. Everything will be arranged. I'll see to it. You just need to get yourself to shore, ready for the next time the ship comes into dock. And where is that? She grimaced. I confess, I do not know, yet, but I will discover it and let you know in good time. Watch for my word. Then the moment broke, and she laughed with relief. Good night, my good Jean Passport too. I must say, it's a relief to show myself to you finally, but you will not see me again for some time, I think. We do not want to compromise your reputation. And with that, she slipped away into the darkness, more fluidly than I could have imagined possible, and I was left stunned and fearful to my very core. Oh boy, that's certainly something. Now, we want to go to the bank, of course. There we go. Turn to the bank to collect our funds. Hooray! <laughs> I guess he thought we were talking to ourselves. We can go to Manila. I have to ask why the hell we would do that, though. That seems like a very poor idea. Because, I mean, that's going backwards, for goodness sakes. <laughs> um, that departs at 2, we don't care. This one is still tomorrow, right? Yes, tomorrow at 3. Okay. We could go to the bank again! Actually, could we actually? Let me think about that. When does this leave again? Tomorrow at 3. And it costs a ridiculous amount of money as well. 
So if it's tomorrow at 3... Oh, it's the weekend tomorrow anyway. No, that's not going to work. Alright, well, let's just hotel again and then we'll finally get ready to go across the water. Uh, let's go out and explore this time. Before going to bed, I went out to explore a little and found a cheerful Chinese artist who had mislaid a locket, which I spotted, and then who, and who then, between fits of great joviality, let it slip that you could pick up according... Yeah, yeah, we don't care. We thanked him. Okay, cool. Uh, considering where we are on the time front, though, I think we'll leave it off here for now. We shall make our way over to San Francisco next time. So for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.